Welcome to the WWE Podcast, your number one source for the latest in WWE news and straightforward analysis. Are you ready to get this thing going? Give me a hell yeah! I said give me a hell yeah! Then let's get this show started right now. All right, everybody, guys and girls, welcome back to another edition of the SmackDown Review right here on the WWE Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Michael Ritter. You can find me on Twitter at Michael5Ritter and on Instagram at MichaelRitter5. Also the host of the Football Function Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. But on today's episode of the SmackDown Review, we're going to be talking about the SmackDown that aired on June 25th, 2021. I will say, just right here at the very beginning of the episode, this isn't going to be a normal SmackDown review. First off, I want to apologize for it being late because normally, as you guys know, I like to do these SmackDown reviews, if not immediately after the show on Friday, early Saturday morning. The past few weeks, I've been doing them early Saturday morning just because I I wanted to try it out with, you know, getting a good night's sleep and then waking up and kind of reviewing SmackDown a little bit and then recording rather than doing it immediately after the show, after working a full day, and then really a full week, meaning that it's Friday night. So I felt like I wanted to see if I was able to deliver a better show doing it that way. And I feel like the past few weeks I really have, but you know, that's, you know, that's just my personal opinion. You guys might think otherwise, but I, the reason why this episode today is late is because I actually got called into work, duty called, literally. Normally I'll have Saturdays off. That wasn't the case this week. So I had to work for, you know, a good chunk of the day today, and I still wanted to watch a little bit of SmackDown afterwards so it can kind of be still more fresh on my mind, so the review is a little bit late. I definitely apologize to Matt. I messaged him early this morning to kind of let him know what was going on. He was fine with it, too, so nonetheless, the episode is still going to come. It's still going to be a SmackDown review, but like I said, it's going to be a little bit different and abbreviated because I am actually going to be joining Matt tomorrow night on uh, on the weekend review. So I don't want to just completely, you know, empty my bag of thoughts here on this episode and not really have anything to say or just have, you know, rehashed opinions on tomorrow's show. I want it to kind of be a fresh conversation. I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't gotten to talk to Matt since March, I think it was. Yeah, it was actually March was the last time that I got to talk to Matt. And as you guys know, there's actually only two more SmackDown reviews next week and the one after that. And then I'll be in Houston doing a live you know, on-site coverage, however we're going to do it, on-site review of the SmackDown that's going to be taking place on July 16th at the Toyota Center, the first SmackDown, the first WWE event on the road with fans and basically a full arena. I have floor seats. I'm going to be behind the announce table, so I'm definitely looking forward to that experience. It's going to be pretty fun, I imagine. I mean, you guys all know I've never been to a uh, a televised event like this, been to the Royal Rumble. If you haven't already heard, that's something that I've already mentioned several times on the show, but I've never been to an actual TV event, so this will be my first time, and I'm definitely looking forward to that. So, And after that show, I'm going to be joining Matt. That was the main reason why I even brought that up, was to let you guys know that, yeah, I'm talking to Matt tomorrow, but we're also going to do a SmackDown review after that event here in three weeks, a little less than three weeks now. So two SmackDown reviews, and then over that third one, that's whenever I'm going to be joining Matt again. I'm looking forward to all the action coming up here. It's going to be a fun summer here on the WWE Podcast with all the other co-hosts dropping content, dropping their weekly episodes. It's just fun. I mean, it's a fun time to be a wrestling fan. It's a fun time to be a WWE Podcast fan, too, with all the stuff going on now, the ad-free stuff on Apple Podcasts. Where was this for the past three years, right? But no, I'm just kidding. But anyways, Patreon's always available. Patreon's something that I've actually been dipping my toes into here lately, and it's definitely worth it. I mean, that Discord server that we were on for Hell in a Cell, I'm glad I actually brought that up because that was a blast. I mean, I'm not sure who all was in there specifically. Some people kind of had, you know, they didn't have their actually, you know, full name as their handle or whatever you want to call it there in Discord. It's I'm not really too, too familiar with the actual Discord server, like how... I mean, I've been in one before for, like, a group chat for, like, a Madden League that I was in. But this is my first one to be in, like, with people that I actually know, you know. I mean, or not really, like, know, but you guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, you guys know who I am. So, I mean, the SmackDown Review, I've been doing it for, this is going to be my 39th 
straight SmackDown review. That's pretty crazy to think about itself. But I will say that uh, that Discord server was pretty fun for Hell in a Cell. Just hearing everybody's live thoughts, kind of hearing their predictions as the match was going on, hearing their thoughts as to why they thought uh, so-and-so was going to win, kind of poking fun at each other. It was fun. I mean, I definitely enjoyed it. There was a little bit of a hiccup with Peacock at the very beginning. I don't know if you guys were experiencing that as well. For whatever reason, Hell in a Cell didn't want to play at the very beginning, like during the kickoff show, and for my TV anyways. It slowly started to work for everybody, but I do feel like there was quite a few people that were dealing with that. And they were kind of, you know, poking fun at me because I was about to fork up the cash for the pay-per-view to watch it. But, hey, that's for you guys, all right? So if you guys want to make fun of me, that's on you because I'm buying these pay-per-views so I could watch it and, you know, give you guys full coverage. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. Just want to make you guys feel bad for making fun of me. But anyways, <clears throat> sorry about that. Keeping things, you know, more on a serious note, I um, I am happy to be here on the WWE podcast team, and I love being a part of it with you guys. It, it does feel like a small family, like a little bit of a community. It, it's a good time, and more and more people that are starting to call into the mailbag on a weekly basis. I mean, that that's its own little community in of itself. You know, you got both Kyles, you got the casual wrestling fan, the Waz, Bevan from Australia. I mean, there's a lot of people who call in on a weekly basis, and it's just fun to hear everybody's voices. DJ Kuzma, one of the, you know, I know personally one of my most loyal listeners here on the SmackDown Review, so shout out to DJ Kuzmo for coming in every week with your thoughts. I mean, it's definitely appreciated on my end, my friend. You know that. So I guess we can go ahead and get in here to the SmackDown Review. That's why you guys are here. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into it. Let's see. It did start with Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. A little bit it started backstage. I mean, Jey Uso, or not Jey Uso, they talk about Jey Uso, but Jimmy walks up and they ask Jimmy, where's your brother at? And he basically says, look, I talked to him. He's not here. And in fact, he says he's not coming back. And you guys know what that's stemming from. A couple weeks ago, whenever Jimmy Uso was still, you know, kind of on the fence with what he wanted to do. And him and Roman Reigns were kind of in Jay Uso's ear on each side. They were kind of just bickering back and forth. And he finally had enough and he walked away. Well, we really haven't seen Jay Uso since then. So... And he said he's not coming back, and that was obviously not something that Roman Reigns wanted to hear. He was actually pretty disappointed in him. But Jimmy Uso claims that he can step up and take Jay's place. He says, I can do what he's been doing for you for however long, like close to a year. And Roman Reigns kind of just chuckles a little bit. He shows that he's not really sure if he's quite ready to believe that Jimmy can do exactly what Jay's been doing, and he basically just tells Jimmy Uso to prove it. And even later on in the night, Paul Heyman has a little bit of an encounter with Jimmy Uso whenever Jimmy's pacing outside of their locker room. And he basically tells Jimmy that he's going to schedule him a match if he really thinks or if he really wants to prove it. But Paul says that if I schedule this, if I schedule you this match, then, I mean, he doesn't even say it. He basically says you don't want to lose. If I schedule this match, don't lose. Without saying it, I mean, basically what's understood doesn't need to be said. So Paul Heyman just kind of walks off and Jimmy Uso knew exactly what was at stake there. But things finally head to the ring, so to speak, by Bianca Belair cutting a promo in the middle of the ring, you know, kind of just talking crap about Bailey. Eventually, Seth Rollins comes out and kind of is being a little bit of an antagonist to Bianca Belair, kind of instigating a little bit. After they share or, you know, they have a little bit of words, Seth Rollins puts up his hand, basically trying to give Bianca a high five. And she says, why would I want to high five you? Did you forget that we're actually going to be in a tag team match against each other tonight? And Seth says, well, after Bianca beats you up and lays you down in the ring, I'm not going to have a chance to do this. So, I mean, you know, kind of just getting one last shot in before Bailey's music hits. And then she comes out. Cesaro even comes out. They start to brawl a little bit before their mixed tag match, which went on a little bit longer than I expected, but ended up being a win for Seth Rollins and Bailey after Bianca Belair had Bailey in the well in the in position to hit the kiss of death. And then Seth Rollins kind of bumps into her. She drops Bailey. Bailey hits a knee to the face. And then a, another move which I wasn't sure what it was called whenever she hit it. Michael Cole said what it was called and I told myself I was going to go back and look it up, but I forgot. So that's on me. But she hits a specific move and then gets the win. They start to celebrate. And then one thing caught my eye here. I'm not sure if it happened immediately after this, but this wasn't all we saw from Seth Rollins. He kind of flips the switch a little bit, and then we see him backstage with Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce. I mean, he was just, you know, screaming at the top of his lungs, celebrating with Bailey, poking fun at Cesaro and Bianca Belair, and now all of a sudden he has his attention fully on the Universal Championship. And that's basically what he goes in there to talk about. He says, well, Roman Reigns is going to address that whole situation later tonight. 
if there's an opening for his opponent, I feel like nobody on this roster is worthy of that spot or more worthy of that spot than me. And he has a point there. Seth Rollins, if you're talking about guys who were on the roster, not a you know fantasy booked match with The Rock or Brock Lesnar or John Cena, just talking about guys who are already on the roster ready to go right now, Seth Rollins is that guy. And I personally think that if booked right, this could be a situation where both of these guys come out better. Just Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, obviously, given what happens at the very end of the show with Edge, that kind of throws a little bit of a fork in the plans right now with that whole thing. But, I mean, I don't know. Seth Rollins, I don't think it's a coincidence that Seth Rollins mentioned the Universal Championship match and then Roman Reigns gets attacked by Edge later on in the night. And then, oh, yeah, there's the rumors going around with Edge versus uh, Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. So there's a lot that you can kind of, you know, sink your teeth into whenever you're talking about those three going at it and this barely getting started so i mean edge did challenge roman reigns for a match at money in the bank so you know who roman reigns next opponent is going to be but that's something that we'll talk about a little bit later in the show but basically the whole reason i was talking about that is because i wanted you guys to know that seth rollins is somebody who i think is definitely capable if he is going to get that opportunity with roman reigns i'm going to be 100 percent invested in that match but continuing on here, we get a Money in the Bank qualifying match with Big E and Apollo Crews with Commander Aziz. Now, this thing kind of bothered me here, just, you know, who Big E was uh, fighting because I feel like Apollo Crews shouldn't have been in this match. He's an Intercontinental Champion. That's just my personal opinion. If you are a current champion, you shouldn't be in the Money in the Bank. That should be a 100% chase mode, you know, match. People that are in it should have nothing around their waist. Nobody on their side. Well, I guess you could have, you know, a crony. I mean, look at Carmelo. She wins with James Ellsworth. It's been a lot of people. Seth Rollins with J&J Security. Just people have won with people in their corner before. But I just personally think that whenever you have somebody win it, whenever they have a championship, I mean, it makes more sense whenever it's a hill, obviously. But it's just still something that I'm not really a fan of. So I, I thought that they could have put somebody else against Big E. I mean, especially the very first qualifying match on this brand. I feel like they could have put somebody else in there with Big E. If you want to get Big E in, I understand it makes sense to put him with the guy he's already uh, feuding with, but I don't know. That was just my opinion on all this, and not to mention Big E. I mean, he ends up winning this match, obviously. They want to get him in this Money in the Bank match. They made sure to specify this is his very first one to qualify for, but man, we can all hope that he gets a new finisher before that because this is probably the worst big ending that I've seen, the one that he used to beat Apollo Crews tonight, and I know I could be a prisoner of the moment just – it being very fresh in my mind, the very last one that I've seen, but I cannot think of another one that was worse than that. It was just, I mean, it's terrible. I mean, it is, it's, in the words of Charles Barkley, it's terrible. I mean, this is just awful. I, I really hope that Big E can get a new finisher, one that really suits him. I mean, nobody's using, let me see, nobody's using the power bomb. Like, like kind of like, you know, how Batista switched it up to the Batista bomb. Big E can do something like that, you know? I mean, he's strong enough to pick up really anybody, I don't see why he can't, you know, get him a move like that. I mean, nobody's really using it. Kevin Owens kind of dropped a pop-up power bomb whenever he started doing the stunner, so I think Big E can kind of just slide in there and do something like that, a big guy move. It just makes sense. That big ending is everything but a big ending, so they just really need to scrap that. Listen to the fans. But anyways, continuing on here, let's see. Sami Zayn has a little backstage segment where he finds out that him and Kevin Owens are going to have a Money in the Bank qualifying match next week. And Sami Zayn obviously does not like that. He just beat Kevin Owens in a pay-per-view. Why am I having to qualify again? This makes absolutely no sense. And then he tells Adam Pearce that, you know, he should be worried about this, but not because of anything that Sami's going to do, but because of karma. So it was specific there. So pay attention to that. Something might happen to Adam Pearce here coming up due to Sami Zayn, or Sami Zayn might just be involved. I don't really know. But, I mean, just keep in mind, he definitely made sure to tell Adam Pearce basically to watch his back. But let's see. Moving on here in the show, we get Sonya Deville. She comes out to the ring, and she introduces Carmella as the very first woman who gets a spot in the women's Money in the Bank match. I really didn't understand why Carmella was the one who was given a spot, but, you know, whatever. Liv Morgan comes out, and then she smacks Carmella in the face. They have a match, which ends in, you know, some type of a roll-up. I thought it was kind of weird because Liv Morgan did basically get powerbombed onto the mat. She hit pretty hard, and then she just rolled over and kind of just pinned Carmella in, some, in a type of a roll-up, but, I mean, it's not, you know, your typical roll-up. She kind of just, you know, put her body weight all over her and pinned her down and got the win. You guys all know, I mean, it was all over the Internet the way that Liv Morgan got this win, but now Liv Morgan, because this match was 
basically a qualifying match for Liv. If Liv won, then she would join Carmella in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And Liv, I know she's probably not going to win. I'm not going to pick her logically. You know, I'm not that crazy. But you guys know I like Liv. I'm 100% going to be rooting for Liv to win this. And I hope that she does. We'll see who else is in this match. But as of right now, with Carmella and Liv representing SmackDown, I'm definitely going to be hoping that Liv Morgan can get that briefcase and bring it home to the blue brand. Let's see here. Continuing on in the show, there's really not a lot more that happened here, honestly. Um, We get a match with Jimmy Uso and Dolph Ziggler. And I personally think that this was match of the night, obviously. I mean, they only went for about 10 minutes, but it was a hell of a match. And surprisingly, which, you know, it definitely caught me off guard, Jimmy Uso won with a super kick. And it doesn't really matter if it was Jimmy Uso or anybody else. The fact that a super kick ended a match, that's crazy. And, I mean, I know it's pretty wild to even think about that, you know, we should be amazed by a super kick winning a match because, I mean, it's a finisher. You know, that should be the normal. If somebody hits a super kick, then they should be out cold. And Jimmy Uso won with that this week against Dolph Ziggler. And these are the two guys who use it the most in, in terms of guys. Carmella's pretty guilty of it herself. But Jimmy Uso and Dolph Ziggler are two guys who have really used the super kick and used it a lot. They're partially responsible for the reason why it's not as, you know, meaningful these days i guess you can say i mean it's crazy to see there's other moves like that too that are you know just kind of watered down a little bit and i feel like these guys are partially responsible for that but it does make sense to have it win the match here with jimmy uso and keep in mind that this is when jimmy uso was supposed to try to prove to roman reigns that he is worthy and he can do what jay does and for whatever reason uh, roman reigns and paul Heyman like they weren't impressed with Jimmy Uso, they were like, eh, you know, whatever. And uh, Jimmy, because Roman Reigns comes out to the ring after this, and when Jimmy comes backstage, he tries to join Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns whenever they go out to the ring. But uh, Paul Heyman basically says, you know, you did great, you did great, but you know, we got this. We don't need you. So kind of, I mean, it, it was a little bit of a. It wasn't really what Jimmy was hoping for after winning that match, and I didn't really understand why they were so disappointed or I guess unpleased with the match. I mean, it was a good match. Dolph Ziggler was a good wrestler to go up against, you know? I mean, and it was a hell of a match. I felt like personally, even Michael Cole said that after, I mean, he'll, he'll say that about any match, but this one, he wasn't lying. It really was a good match. Like I said, it wasn't long, only about 10 minutes, but I enjoyed it. And I thought that the super kick finish was nice. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jey Uso never won a match with the super kick. He probably tried it and it got kicked out of multiple, multiple times, but Nonetheless, I don't think he's ever gotten a, a win with strictly a super kick. So I feel like that was more impressive for Jimmy Uso to do that. And for whatever reason, Roman Reigns was not impressed. So they basically say they got this and they tell Jimmy to stay back and they go out there to the ring. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman have their what was advertised as basically the Universal Championship is going to be addressed. The whole picture. I mean, I really didn't know what to call this. I mean, Seth Rollins knew about it because he referenced it earlier in the night. Everybody pretty much knew what was going to happen. I mean, they didn't know specifically what was going to happen. They knew that Roman Reigns was going to go out there and basically say what he said, but they didn't expect the person to come out who came out, or at least I didn't expect that. But like I was saying, they go out to the ring, and Paul Heyman starts to list off all of the guys who have tried and failed at beating Roman Reigns, and... It's very rare that I feel or – I mean, I, I just think it's rare for them to mention people's names who are no longer working for the company and who actually just got released. They mentioned Braun Strowman's name on live television. I thought that was kind of weird. Paul Heyman said – you know, he was listing off all the people who have failed. You know, he mentioned Rey Mysterio. He mentioned Daniel Bryan and Edge, and he mentioned Braun Strowman. And I thought that was kind of weird that he actually said his name – given that he just got released. I mean, I just, I think that's weird. I mean, unless there's some type of plan to bring him back already, I don't really know why you would bring him up on television that soon. But that's just me. It was it was just kind of weird, I guess you can say. But as they were going on and they said, there's nobody left on the roster, I thought Seth Rollins was going to come out. I really did. I thought that Seth Rollins was going to be the one who interrupted and he came out and he tried to talk to Roman Reigns. I thought that that was going to be the start right there. It was going to start building maybe... To SummerSlam, but you know, I, at this point, I really wasn't taking the rumors too seriously. You know, like I, I wasn't really f- putting too much thought into 
Seth Rollins versus Edge at SummerSlam. You know, I, I really don't know if that's going to happen now. Like I just said earlier in the show, what happened in this segment kind of threw a little bit of a fork in that because now you think you're going to get, with no Daniel Bryan in the picture, you're going to get that true Edge versus Roman Reigns program. And we've already got the match announced at Money in the Bank, Edge versus Roman Reigns. So we are going to get that spear versus spear, new era versus old school. I mean, it's going to be a fun thing to watch. Honestly, I mean, Roman Reigns has had some great opponents at Money in the Bank. If I'm not mistaken, I think like four years ago, he actually went one-on-one with Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank, and it would have just been a pretty cool coincidence if Seth Rollins was the one who he ended up fighting this year. But we already know it's going to be Edge. I'm looking forward to that match. I think it's going to be cool. I- I'm-, I'm looking forward to hearing from Edge as to why he came back to attack Roman Reigns. I mean, is it just strictly because he beat him in WrestleMania? I mean, I really don't understand. You know Edge is going to cut a, a mean promo. He's damn good at that. He's a, especially since he's been back, I feel like he's really turned it up a notch, just focusing more on how his promos can set him up in the ring and just continue storylines and make fans invested. So, um, Edge just gets it, man. He's just one of the absolute best. So anytime he's involved in a program, you know it's going to be juicy. You know that the, the guys who are involved are going to put in the work and they're going to care about it. And that that's always important to me whenever you see like documentaries and backstage stuff, when you see how invested these wrestlers are, and Edge in particular, you know, he didn't want anybody finding out about his return. And that's just kind of like just an example, a very small example of how he operates and how he thinks about the business. You know, he knows how important the fan is, how the surprise aspect, he he gets all that stuff, you know. So having him involved in the main event picture, you know, you just got to enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be many more opportunities for Edge to go after a title like this. We kind of just talked about it with Rey Mysterio, although I do think Edge is a lot more credible right now. He was in the main event at WrestleMania just this year, and now he's back in this picture. So I personally think that we have a little bit more, even though he is dealing with that whole injury situation, I do feel like we have a little bit more in the tank for Edge than we did Rey Mysterio. So I'm not going to, you know, sing Edge's goodbye just yet. I feel like we still have a lot more that Edge can offer us, but I'm looking forward to this. I mean, he comes out, and they have a little bit of a brawl with Roman Reigns. I know I got super off uh, off track, off topic, whatever. I was about to say both those words into one right there. You know what I'm trying to say, though. I got completely off topic and stopped talking about the actual main event, which Edge comes out and he starts brawling with Roman Reigns. He actually starts beating the hell out of him, but Roman Reigns eventually hits a Superman punch, puts Edge down, but that really doesn't last very long. Edge ends up bringing a chair into the ring, and he sets Roman Reigns up for the concerto. But before he gets an actual good shot at hitting it, Jimmy Uso comes out and saves the day for Roman Reigns, or at least he tries to eventually Edge gets the better of him by spearing him through the barricade. And then Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman make a quick run up the ramp and they get out of sight as quickly as possible. And Edge just basically screams at the camera like he always does and says that he's back, he's right here, he's ready to go. And like we found out today, this morning, he gets his match at Money in the Bank. So there you go. Universal Championship. Roman Reigns no longer is opponentless. He has one. So we can kind of get used to that. I'm looking forward to getting Matt's thoughts on this match in particular. I mean, this is the one. I want to know what he thinks about Edge. So I'm definitely going to ask him about that. But that should just about do it for the SmackDown review. I know it's a little bit quicker. You know, I didn't really go in depth with a lot of this stuff. I didn't talk about a couple of the backstage segments that weren't very important. But. Nonetheless, I'm excited. I mean, we only got two more SmackDown reviews, guys. I want to know, are you guys, is anybody else going to Houston for the um, SmackDown that I'm going to be at? Because I'm just curious if anybody else has tickets to that because I thought it was kind of weird. It actually sold out like pretty quick after I got my tickets and I didn't even know that there was like a rush to get them. Like it's kind of like that, you know, there's like a meme going around where like somebody's like walking out of a building and like the building's blowing up behind them and they don't even realize it. You know, they're just kind of walking. Like that's kind of how I was whenever I just like casually was looking for tickets one day, like just out of curiosity. I want to know how much it costs to go to this thing. And I looked and I saw that, you know, the seat that I thought was a pretty good seat wasn't very expensive. So I decided to hop on that and get it. And next thing you know, like weeks later, I heard that it was completely sold out. And I don't know if that's actually a fact, but it's something that I heard, so I was just curious if any of the other WWE podcast listeners are going to be attending that. If that, def- if you are, definitely let me know because it would be pretty cool to say what's up to you. But anyways, I hope all you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you all continue listening to this show. 
I definitely appreciate it. I hope you all will listen to the smack or not the smackdown. I did that earlier in the show too. The Week in Review. If you will listen to the Week in Review tomorrow, I'll definitely appreciate that. I'll be joining Matt, and there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about. I, I listened to his Raw review earlier in the week, and he didn't really have that many good things to say about Raw. He, he wasn't very high on it. And, you know, I personally, I'm probably going to watch it again just to, you know, get it fresh on my mind before I get on and talk with him. But either way, I mean, I'm excited to do this. I love getting on and talking about everything, not just SmackDown, getting to talk about stuff that happened on Raw and getting someone else's thoughts about SmackDown. So I'm looking forward to that. But like I said, thank you all for listening. Hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Walk passionately in the direction of your dreams, and I'll talk to you soon.